Hey everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House, and on today's episode, I'm gonna show you some items that can help you finally automate the rest of the items in your house. So this all started with a coffee pot, specifically my self-grinding Cuisinart coffee pot that's over here. Now it is equipped with a dumb timer, but in the event of a power outage or we just forget to set it, it obviously won't start grinding coffee in the morning. Plus, on the weekends, we like to wake up a little bit later or sometimes our kids get up early and we would then have to come down here and turn on the coffee pot. Now, I understand that's completely first world problems, but that's what automation is, isn't it? So the whole point of this project was to be able to trigger the coffee pot with my phone by pressing a button in an app or scanning an NFC tag on my bedside table. Eventually, I wanted it to be controlled by a script on Home Assistant when I take my phone off the charger or with a Google Assistant routine. So my first idea was to use an Arduino-based ESP Home project where I would actually solder in to the button on the front of the board on this coffee pot and then control it using the Arduino. But the risk was I could have broken this coffee pot and had to go back to making K-cups again. So luckily, I received an email from SwitchBot asking me if I wanted to check out some of their new products. Now, a lot of folks in the home automation space have been talking about their cool new curtain bots that allow you to open and close curtains just by placing this device up on a curtain rod and having it drag the curtains open and closed. Those are pretty cool, but unfortunately I don't have any curtains in my house. My house is nothing but blinds and roller shades. So I asked them to send me some of their other products that I could take a look at. So on today's video, let's take a look at some of the cool stuff that you can do with products from SwitchBot. So after receiving the package from SwitchBot, first thing I wanted to do was slap one of these right on the coffee pot and get started. Now, unfortunately, because of the design of this coffee pot, everything's curved and there's not a great surface to stick this bot on the coffee pot and have it be able to have enough force to press the button continuously. After a couple of presses, the SwitchBot would have just fallen off because of the curved surface. So what did I do? I turned to my 3D printer. Now this is the first time I've actually designed something from scratch for my 3D printer. So after a few iterations, I was able to come up with this. It's a simple curved piece of plastic but with a cutout on it for the SwitchBot. So the SwitchBot can be secured to this little bracket and then apply some double-sided sticky tape to place it on the coffee pot. So now that I've done that, the SwitchBot securely fastened to the coffee pot and I've been using it the last couple of days and it's working pretty well. I do have a link to this STL file. I'll upload it to the Thingiverse. It's not done yet. There's still some uh, iterations I need to make to it, but if you'd like to grab it, if you happen to have a similar coffee pot, so go ahead and feel free to use it. I did have to add a little shim to offset the sticky tape, but I'll be 3D printing a small disc for this later on. So to test this, all we have to do is open up the app and add our bots to our account. Once we add that bot to our account, we can simply press the button in the app to have it actuate the switch bot. Now this is currently in the push button mode. There are two modes and we'll talk about the other one here in a second. One thing I did fail to mention is how these things connect to your phone. All the products use Bluetooth, so you have to be in range of the devices around 100 feet or less to control and update them. That is unless you have the hub, which we'll talk about later. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's head upstairs into the office and I'll show you the other mode that's available for these bots. All right, so now we're upstairs in the office to take a look at the other mode available to the switch bots. The one downstairs is using what's called a push mode. There's also what they call switch mode, which allows the arm to come out and sit in a more neutral position instead of inside of the case or out of the way to push. So what this allows you to do is take one of the switch accessories, stick it onto your switch, and then feed the fishing line through the arm to allow it to pull a switch on or toggle it off. Now, all you have to do to change the mode is to open up the bot and then go to modes and then change it to switch mode. Again, this will allow it to to change into a neutral position and then you can go ahead and get it set up. Now setting up is super easy. All you have to do is stick the accessory piece on the bottom of your toggle switch, then connect the SwitchBot arm to the fishing line loop and then go ahead and adhere your SwitchBot to the switch. Now just as a word of warning, this only works with certain types of switches. Now on their website, they have a little grid that shows you what type of switches work and what types do not. Now in my case, being an American, we only really have two types of main switches that you'll find in houses. The toggle style switches, which has the little flipper that goes up and down, and then the decor style paddle switches, which you might find in more high-end homes or homes that have home automation. Now these decor style paddle switches are the ones that you can use with the SwitchBot because it has a rocker style paddle versus the up and down flipping of a toggle switch. 
some mechanical engineering genius could come up with a 3D printable device that allows you to use a switch bot on a toggle switch, but so far I haven't seen one. So be aware of that if you want to automate one of these switches. Now you may ask yourself, why would I want to, why would I want to have one of these things hanging off my wall instead of just replacing it with a smart switch? Well, you may have a situation where you don't have a neutral, so therefore you can't use the majority of smart switches, or it's especially high current load that a typical smart switch wouldn't be able to handle. Or maybe a situation where you just flat don't want to deal with the electrical work. So all these are good opportunities to use one of these switch bots on a light switch. Like I said, I've set mine up here in the office because it's about the only one that I have that's not smart. And it's nice to be able to turn off the smart switch while sitting at my desk or if I forget to turn the lights off and then notice it as I leave for the day. So there you go, that's the bot product. Now let's head back downstairs and we'll talk about the features on the hub. All right, so now I mentioned in the last section about if you wanted to be able to utilize these devices while you're outside of the house or not within Bluetooth range, you're gonna need their hub. Now. I'm not a fan of hubs. I don't like having to buy a hub for every device, but the SwitchBot hub is a little bit different. And what intrigued me about it was the fact that you can use it as an IR blaster. So if you're not familiar with what an IR blaster is, it means you can program it like any other infrared mode in your house. So I've actually got mine right up here on top of my refrigerator because that way it can control the items that are in my living room over here. Now, some of the items that I use this for is I have it able to control an oscillating fan in my living room so I can turn it on and off. Unfortunately, with that fan, I had it connected to a smart switch, but when you, you could turn it off, but when you turn it back on again, it wouldn't resume the mode it was in. So I can use this up here to be able to turn the fan on, change the oscillating mode and turn up the speed. I also use it to control the sound bar underneath my TV, which I would show that, but it's covered in Christmas decorations right now. I In here, I've got it set up for a the TV, the soundbar, and the fan. Additionally, if you happen to be in a house that has a split pack type of air conditioning unit or a baseboard heater that can be controlled by infrared, you can use this to control that. Now the IR blaster on this thing is really powerful and it seems to be able to get anything within reason. So I'm able to have it sit up here just like this and it can control all the items in the living room. Here pretty soon I'm gonna use some double-sided sticky tape to be able to stick it right up here on this uh, piece of wood here and have it to, it's, it's got a more permanent location to be able to point out over the whole living room. Now, I'm not entirely sure of all the direction, but it seems to be 180 degrees in front of the hub itself, both vertical and horizontal. So it does seem to have more than one set of uh, IR emitters in there. Now, if you were to open up the app, you can program any device you want into it. It's got some presets. It'll take you through sort of an onboarding process to where you tell it what type of device it is, whether it's a TV, or a media device, or a fan, and then it's gonna have you take that remote, point it at it, and it's gonna try to guess which device that you're using, and you can go through and test them. And if those don't work, you can then set up a custom device to be able to do whatever you want it to do. Now, when you do add the hub in, it obviously gives you the ability to control your devices while you're outside of the house, but it also allows you to unlock using a Google Assistant or an Amazon Alexa to control your devices. So it's pretty neat how it works. Once the devices have been added in your app, not controlled locally, but when you actually have added them in the app for your specific account, then all you have to do is go into settings and turn on cloud access, and that will let the devices communicate directly to the hub. You don't need to repair them from the phone to the hub. So it's pretty neat. It allows direct control if you're inside the house using the Bluetooth, or if you're out of the house, you can connect this over the cloud, and then it'll take the Bluetooth signals and send them to your devices. So this will work really handy with the next device we're gonna talk about. One thing of note is that you, if you do create a completely customized device and you didn't use one of the presets to start with, then you will not be able to control it using Google or Alexa. Unfortunately, it has to have a device type to start with for you to be able to use that. So if you do have a device that isn't directly supported by the SwitchBot hub, then I was just finding something close enough to it and then just customizing each of the buttons to your liking. So for the last two devices, let's head upstairs to the twins room. So if this video is giving you any value, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell to be notified of my latest videos. This really lets the algorithm know that these videos are useful and helpful to people and gets them out to other people who don't normally watch my channel. All right, so here we are in my twins room to look at the last two products from SwitchBot. These two go together, but they are sold separately. First being their combination thermometer and hygrometer. So what this device does is it lets you see the temperature and the humidity in a room, and it also allows it to be displayed here on screen. Now this does have onboard storage, so even if you're disconnected from either the hub or the phone, it will keep the data on board, I believe up to 30 days, and then it'll dump it the next time it's connected. So in the app, it does have a nice graph that you can select from hours, days, weeks, and months to see a trend in a particular room. And it does come with a nice little kickstand to allow you to set it up on a counter. I 3D printed this bracket because I didn't realize it had a kickstand in the box, but it does have a kickstand so you don't need something to hold it up. 
There's some very clever people on Thingiverse that have converted these into monitors for their filament boxes or their terrariums for their reptiles. The second product we're gonna talk about is the humidifier. So this is a smart humidifier. It allows you to use the app on your phone to control how much humidity is put into a room at a time. This is great because in the wintertime, we like to run a humidifier for the kids. And sometimes we'll leave it on after they get up and it'll just go ahead and run the tank out or it'll get too humid in a room. We've had an incident one time where we walked into my oldest son's room and it was a dense fog in there because of how much humidity we've been putting in. When used with the meter and the hub, you can use this to automatically control the humidity in a room. When the meter detects the humidity getting low, it'll automatically kick on the humidifier. Now the humidifier has a three and a half liter tank on it, so it's a pretty large humidifier. And in addition on the side, it has a small drawer that allows you to add essential oils if you wanna add say lavender for calming in a room. So these are both cool products. I'll be really excited to play with them this winter when it gets super dry in my house. All right, so there you go. Now there are some devices that you can use around your house to kind of fill in the gaps that you may have with things like smart switches or smart bulbs. I really wanna thank SwitchBot for giving me an opportunity to take a look at these devices. I'd actually been researching the SwitchBot bots for quite a while and hadn't pulled the trigger on them until they gave me the email. Thank you again to SwitchBot for sending me these products to take a look at. If you're interested, I've got links down in the description to each of the products, both from Amazon and the official SwitchBot store. So I hope this video helped you fill in some gaps in your smart home. Now, if you have any questions on these products, feel free to place them in the comments below or join our Discord. Now, if you'd like to see more review videos, click on this playlist right here. If you'd like to let the algorithm select the next video for you, click up here. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thank you again, and I'll see you next week.